and from cracking down on countries in the Middle East to cracking down on the media here in D.C. The U.S. prides itself on its freedoms, freedom of speech being one of them, until someone asks a tough question. It's even worse when that person is not part of the mainstream media. The Saudi prince recently spoke at the National Press Club here in the nation's capital, and journalist Sam Husseini took the opportunity to ask him some tough questions. Take a look. What legitimacy does your regime have? Well, let a billion let of dollars and weapons. Sam, let him answer. Would you like to come and speak here? Would you like to come and speak here? Give a speech. I'm trying to answer that question. Later that day, Husseini got a letter informing him that he is banned from the press club. So is there an attempt to silence certain voices and certain viewpoints in the media? Well, Sam Husseini himself is here to tell us all about what went down. Welcome, Sam. Thank you. What happened? Well, I tried to ask a question about the role of the Saudi regime. Uh, they uh, invaded Bahrain. They're at the center of counter-revolutions in the Middle East. It's a misogynistic regime. Uh, it obviously is oppressing its own people. So people are asking questions about the legitimacy of the Syrian regime. I thought it was only fair to ask the, about the legitimacy of the Saudi regime. And then so, um, and then you were, and then what happened after the fact? Well, what, well the executive director got into my face because um, the prince, as he likes to call himself, um, uh, asked me, have I been to Saudi Arabia? And I felt that this was a typical politician dodge. Uh, I said, what's your legitimacy? I'm not gonna, it doesn't matter if I've been to Saudi Arabia. What's your legitimacy? And he answered again. I said, what's your legitimacy? And the executive director got into my face um, trying to get me to shut up at that point. I had some words with him outside as I left. He grabbed my arm at one point, and then I got a letter saying that I was uh, suspended from the press club for two weeks. And what was the reason you were given for Bo the suspension? Boisterous behavior. I was guilty of boisterous and unseemly behavior, as best as I can determine. And the so-called ethics committee um, is not telling me about other cases. Everything is confidential. The, the press club, which is supposed to be this monument to the First Amendment, uh, so conducts all that... of its ethics uh, probes uh, in, in secret, apparently. And I've just been speaking by, to other members. It's apparently stuff that uh, people who swear at the bar have been charged with occasionally. It's, it's never, as far as I can tell, been applied to a journalistic situation. So boisterous behavior, do you think that is a justified reason? Would you call your behavior boisterous and no, no. as what, grounds what I, for... What I was guilty of was asking tough questions of a uh, autocratic political official who's allied with the United States. Um, that, that's my crime, of practicing journalism against uh, uh, somebody who is uh, wedded to the establishment. And the, mm -hmm. Now, I understand that you've asked tough questions before at yeah. the National Press Club. Uh, one of the last times was with um, Iranian leader Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. I didn't actually get any questions in there because there were so many other people who were tripping over themselves to ask him so many tough questions. Um, Would you so, say that they're equally as tough as the questions you were asking the Saudi press? Th that's my memory. I haven't actually reviewed that, but that's my memory. I mean, I certainly have been... Uh, th there have been other occasions where I've asked tough questions of somebody, uh, like uh, the neo-Nazi um, uh, hater from uh, Austria. Uh, he was at the press club. He, he died a while ago, but before that, obviously, he was at the press club. And I asked him, and they let me have, like, four follow-ups, because... He's not somebody who's part of the establishment, so they were fine with me asking him a bunch of tough questions uh, without any constraints. And they actually congratulated the moderator, who was the same moderator here, came up and you know congratulated me afterwards for my good work. So it it depends on who the target is, apparently. So do you think there's unspoken rules about who gets the tough questions and who doesn't? Yeah, I think it's people who are allied with the establishment get a soft treatment. Uh, because the press club wants to make sure that they keep coming. Well, they want access, and they can't think of a more creative way of getting access uh, rather than uh, asking uh, uh, easy questions. And I think all politicians, uh, all leaders, um, and indeed all leaders of movements and so on, should be subjected to tough questions. Now, um, what do you think this has to say about the media and the, and the freedom of speech in the U.S. today? Well, I, I think that the, the journalism needs to be reinvented. I mean, one of my my main projects is with the Institute for Public Accuracy, and I put out critical material, and I ask tough questions at the press club. Another project I have is called WashingtonStakeout.com, where I go on Sunday morning to all of the Sunday morning talk shows, where they politicians go and they 
get asked banal questions and they give deceitful answers and then they step outside and then there are more cameras there and they ask them the same banal questions. And I go there with a cameraman in tow and I ask them actual tough questions. And I think that, that we need to come to a new journalism uh, where tough questions are, are asked and where politicians and others are held accountable for their words. I mean, is anybody held accountable for their lies about uh, Iraqi WMDs and you know, 20 other issues? No, it's just, just more of the same and it just keeps rolling along. And we need to set up structures where people are accountable, where, where their words no longer matter if they've deceived so many times about so many things. Right. Well, we hope you keep those tough questions coming. Thank you Thanks. so much for sharing your story with us. That was Communications Director of the Institute for Public Accuracy, Sam Husseini.